Welcome back. This is lesson eight of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session nine. This is the summary lesson where we will go over what we learned in this session. In this session, we discussed, we talked about deploying deep learning models using AWS Lambda. This is a nice way of doing this without worrying about servers. So we needed to do was to define this Lambda handler, some code where this Lambda handler is there. It actually doesn't need to be called this way. We can call it whatever we want, but we need to write some code in this way and then we can deploy this to lambda without worrying about any servers and this is really great because we only pay for using lambda when we actually need it when we send request and it's doing something computing something and replies back we don't pay for the time when it's idle when there are no requests coming in. so this is good for low volume requests and i also use it quite often for my personal projects as well you saw that in lesson two, for example. Yeah, so what we did then, we took this code we wrote and we packaged it in Docker. With Docker, it's actually very nice because you don't need to deploy it to Lambda and test it there. You can do this locally, just put everything into Docker image, package everything, run, and then this way you can easily make sure that the environment you have locally works. And then after verifying that everything is fine, you can deploy it to Lambda and you will not have any surprises there. After that, you just give it more RAM, increase timeout, and that's all you need to do. And then you expose it using API gateway, and that's it. So another thing we talked about in this session was TensorFlow Lite. TensorFlow Lite focuses only on the inference of TensorFlow models. It's very small. It's not that simple because you remember that we needed to write a lot more code for doing this. It's more lines then just dot predict but the benefits of doing that is it's much 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 smaller than the big tensorflow maybe it's interesting to take a look at the size i think it's three megabytes so let me just take a look at this yeah it's two megabytes right so it's quite small and if we look at uh, tensorflow 270 wheel size then We see that it's 200 megabytes or even almost 500 and this is packed so when we pack it it's much 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 more than that it's um, 200 times 100 times reduction in size which is a good thing so that's what we discussed in this session i hope you liked it and yeah there are more things that you can explore aws lambda is not the only way of deploying models using this so-called serverless fashion then google cloud provides something similar microsoft azure provides something similar I think you can find similar services in all cloud providers so you can experiment with that and see which one you like more then of course you can deploy other models for example in the homework you will deploy the model that we built in the previous session this cuts versus docs image classifier so we will deploy it with AWS Lambda. So this is something you can also experiment with is taking other models and deploying it. Then maybe the last thing I should mention is it works well for not just deep learning models, but also for usual models. You can deploy XGBoost, you can deploy linear regression from scikit-learn, you can deploy pretty much anything using AWS Lambda. So you can play with that as well. And for example, use it for your capstone project. So that's all I have about this topic. I hope you enjoyed it. And See you next week when we will talk about Kubernetes as an alternative way of deploying machine learning models. See you soon.